Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Antique Auction Forum podcast. It's been a little while. I'm glad to be back today with a great guest, a uh, wonderful artist. Uh, I've heard the name for many years, got to meet him this year. His name is David Vickery, and uh, he works from his home in Cushing, Maine. He's been there, uh, working there since 1991. And uh, from his, uh, his own words, his work is about the merger of nature and culture an attempt to make sense of our place in the world. Um, David actually looks at interior spaces and our imprint on the landscape with an eye for the imperfect, quirky, and sometimes elegant adaptations we make in order to live here. I'm not sure if he means live here in the world or live here in Maine. (laughs) I'm going to have to ask him that. David, welcome to the show. Hi, Martin. Thank you for having me. Yes. Um, So, yeah, as the crow flies, we're... uh, we're, I, I guess, uh, you know, we met this, uh, uh, I don't know, last month, and uh, but we're we live right near each other, and uh, we have a connection too because uh, Wally is your neighbor, and um, I work yeah. through with his daughter in the appraisal business, so yeah, we're all connected this way and that way. Yeah. So, so welcome, David. Um, so uh, we are going to be talking about your paintings, which are I think are absolutely beautiful. And like I mentioned, I heard your name before. I've seen uh, display cards and and things over over the years, and uh, so you and you have a, a really good. I would say you have a really good following too, wouldn't you? Yeah, I think so. I mean, you know, enough to to have made a living at it. Over yeah, is nice. Yeah. And that's uh, that's for anyone out there who's ever tried to make a living as an artist. It's not easy. <laughs> no, it's not an easy thing. No. <laughs> In a way, you can you can almost um, you know when it when it comes to some of the major pieces and major artists out there, it's sort of like a rock star, you know that just very few trickle to the top. Yeah, um, and you know usually it's talent based on both aspects. <laughs> mm. <laughs> yeah, not always though. <laughs> no. Yeah. Um, no. So let's hear a little bit about you, David. Um, what got you started in uh, painting and y- your whole background, if you would. Yeah, well, I grew up in Connecticut and, you know, it was, did a lot of drawing and painting in elementary school. And I remember being in a gifted art program, I think in fourth grade, and I was copying Edward Hopper paintings. You know, the teacher. Oh, wow. Yeah. Here, you know, here's an art book, you know, find a painting you like and copy it. And I wouldn't write to Edward Hopper. Yeah. You know, I was like 10 years old. So now I'm still kind of doing the same thing today, you know, drawing houses in their landscape with, you know, a sense of habitation and melancholy or whatever. But um, hmm. I guess and then after that, maybe in high school, I didn't do so much. I got bored with that. And uh, I so got into photography a lot in high school with, you know, the Ansel Adams and Paul Strand and mm-hmm. Edward Weston. I, I fell in love with that work and I, I got some fancy camera equipment and went hiking around in the woods and fields and took a lot of pictures. A lot of wow. boring pictures, but I learned a lot of <laughs> composition. Yeah. You know, I, I spent a lot of time looking at the viewfinder, uh, trying to force this brilliant image. And um, I did that for a number of years. But then it was it, about 30 years ago, I was at College of the Atlantic in, in Bar Harbor. And on a whim, I took a drawing course, which I enjoyed, and then a, a watercolor course, and then a painting course after that, an oil painting course. And I really got hooked on it. Uh, from there because I didn't think I could do it until I really tried and you know yeah um, you know the teachers were good and it were encouraging and, and because it's not really an art college um, it was just kind of a small pool of students so I felt safer to kind of to try and maybe not be so great at it but you know I really got hooked on it and yeah. it's kept ch- kind of charging along from there I know that um, you know Sometimes oil is hard for someone that first starts because of the drying time and, you know, they, they just get frustrated and want instant results. But but you you must have I mean, I look I, I look and I think I'm going to just pull up one of your paintings for, um, sure. you know, for those uh, of you that are um, on YouTube and watching. I mean, here's let's just see the clouds right here. I mean, to me, uh, I've tried to do clouds um, in paintings and uh, I as I mentioned to you off air, you know, it's uh, usually by accident. I mean, that is just in this, this work here. I absolutely love this, 
right? this work. And, and, it, and it almost seems in a way that you're finding colors that don't exist. I mean, that blue, I, I just have never seen that blue. And I, I can't make that blue. I don't know how you make that blue. Is yeah, I took some liberties with that. I kept mixing different colors and different layers until I got that shade. But yeah. I was trying to get one of those really sunny, dry days when the sky is just a really deep, deep blue. And over the years, I realized you can take liberties and. Yeah. Oops. Uh, we got a little bit of internet freezing right there, but that that's okay. I think, uh, oh, okay. yeah, we just missed that little last part of it. So, you know, like, uh, for instance, Maxfield Parish, you know, painted in many layers and, and uh, you know. Oh, I love his work. Yeah. 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 Um, and it's amazing. I, I got to see one in person uh, this last year that an unknown one that was just fabulous, just fabulous um, at his house in uh, in New Cornish, New Hampshire, uh, the fountain there. It's just. Gorgeous. Oh, I've, yeah. Yeah. I've been wanting to go visit there or whatever's left of it. I'd, I'd love to. Yeah. Yeah. I uh, haven't been there, but I heard it's still it's still pretty nice there. Um, so I, I guess. I'll, I'll, so you went to school and you kind of got hooked in it. Now, did you do other things, you know, like say work a regular job and, and painting on the side or, you know, what, what was your, how did your career? Yeah. Um, carpentry, you know, my dad was a builder. I grew up working with him. So I learned all those skills over the years. And so I did a lot of carpentry as a regular job. Yeah. And when I was in college, I was thinking of getting into furniture building, you know, something a little finer too. Uh -huh. but, um, but then I decided to go with painting. It was actually I had a lower overhead, you know, just canvas and paints and brushes. If you wanted to go into woodworking, you had to get a shop and all this expensive equipment. And oh yeah. So I think I was just getting having enough success with painting that I felt I could, you know, go for it and see if it would work out. Ah. And now, then I worked odd okay. jobs, you know, with doing carpentry now and then. Yeah. But I think around ninety two I was able to um to go full time, you know. Wow. And uh, what, what, you know, I, I, I describe um, the feeling when selling a painting is uh, it's not about the money so much as the appreciation. Do you, do you share that? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's that feeling that someone else appreciated it enough. They yeah. liked your idea. Yeah. Enough to want to own it. And yeah, that is a great feeling. Yeah. So do you think that a lot of what you do in your artwork has to do with your experience behind the lens? Yeah, pretty much. That, that's a way of, of holding the image. You know, you're out in the world and you can just grab that image and that feeling and, and hold it there and take it back to the studio and then analyze it and, and recompose it carefully and, um, you know, work on it over time. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, Sometimes do thumbnail sketches. A few I've just sort of made up out of my head. But um, yeah, yeah, I'm still pretty hooked into photography. Although yeah. what I like about painting is that you're not trying to imitate the photo. It, it's, the photo is just a starting point, you know, that kind of nails down all the uh, the facts of the scene. And then from there, you can play with light, shadow, color, move things around, whatever. Yeah. I always remember the frustrating thing about photography is there's always something in the way. You get a telephone <laughs> pole, yeah, fabulous scene, and there's this awkward thing sticking in, you know. And the painting, you just get rid of all that. It's great. Yeah, um, I saw a painting recently of a. It was a an early painting of a child portrait, um, and she was sitting in a landscape, and there was a broken dead tree behind her. And I thought, you know. If I was an artist, that I would not have painted that tree in, even though it was sitting there myself. You know, I right. mean, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so, um, you, you know, the the lighting—that's um, another thing you want to do uh, th that you do so well, and uh, and and to me, that's also something you have to you have to pay attention to all the way through a painting from start to finish. In other words, the angle of the light and. And uh, so how do you, how do you do, do you do that mostly from photo reference? Yeah. 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 You're always paying attention to light and shadow and um, choosing scenes that usually have a strong sunlight, you know, strong sun and shadow. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's something I learned 
long ago that light was the most important thing, you know, from reading about like at Hopper and Maxfield Parish. That uh, when I started out, I liked those really heavy, dense colors. You know, I liked the substance, but the paintings were really murky. So it took several years to get enough light into them, hmm. you know, and, and realize that's that's the most important thing. And um, it's also this one thing in the painting that everyone can relate to. Whatever else you may be trying to say, if there's really good light, that's something that, that every, everyone can appreciate. Yeah, yeah. And another thing, going back to uh, photographs, um, I, uh, I, I was uh, kind of interested to see because I've I've handled a number of artists' estates, and you know, some noted artists, and um, a lot of times they say, that, "Well, they never use photo photographs," but that's totally false. I have found all kinds of photographs in artists' estates where they uh -huh. use the, you know, they'll photo the model uh, for reference, again, for reference. It's just, mm -hmm. you know, little characteristics and maybe several poses by that artist and they have a whole separate pose. But it's, uh, um, photos have been used for reference for artists as long as photos have been around, as far as I know. Yeah. In my experience. Yeah, that's what I've read. Yeah. Too. Yeah. Um, and so, we, you did a lot of drawing when you were young, uh, but would you consider yourself mostly self-taught even though you did take some classes? Yeah, I would say so. Because it was really just two college level classes that I had in painting. And then after that, it really was being self-taught. Yeah, by going to galleries and museums and yeah. you know, kept buying art books and going through all of art history and studying all that. But yeah, a lot of trial and error. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of frustration and mediocre paintings. And, yeah, you, know, you have just enough success to keep you going. <laughs> <laughs> Dangerously. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's yeah. Right. <laughs> um, I want to put this uh, painting up here for people watching on YouTube because, to me, I saw this in person this summer and I was absolutely blown away by this work. Um, and what it is for the listener, it and uh, you can see it on the website again. It's a campfire scene. And I'm telling you, when you see this painting in person, it looks like that's real fire, like you'd, you'd burn your, your fingers on that <laughs> just okay. if you touched it. Um, how on earth did you get that, that contrast? I mean, I can't understand how you made that look so much like fire. I think it's, it was just starting with the center of the fire, you know, the, being the brightest point bright yellowish white or whatever. And then everything gets more orangey and red as you go out. So it's really contrasts. It's um, focusing on that bright point. And everything is that much darker. So you have to make, if you want the sense of fire, you've got to make sure you've got some pitch black in there or uh, yeah. darkest value that, that you can get. You know, it's all contrast. It's like um, Caravaggio's work. Very, very strong contrast. You know. There was a there was an artist called Sparks. Have you ever heard of that one? It's a, no. a California artist. He was he was pretty good at that type of uh, that type of work. Williams William, William Sparks, I think. Mm -hmm. um, um, and as I I have to say, Nocturnes are one of my favorite paintings. I, when I'm like in a museum or something like that, uh, we talked about Maxfield Parish. There's a beautiful Nocturne he has of a church in the background and the lights in it. In, inside and everything i love nocturnes but yeah. is that a real difficult thing to paint yeah yeah it is because you're still trying to preserve some sense of light in it um but everything's kind of dark and it's also difficult to mix colors because everything is is muted there's a lot of grays you know the saturation and everything is really low but you're still trying to make things stand out um yeah and they usually have a folk, it's usually contrast with like a, a bright lighted window in a house that's yellow and the rest of the scene outside will be cool or bluish or, or gray. So that there again, it's strong contrast, but yes, yeah, a lot of really, really maddeningly uh, subtle colors. <laughs> would you, you know, can, would you consider that like the most difficult type of painting to uh, take on challenge? Well, I would say portraits are, ah, I've yeah. done four or five portraits and they're just totally unforgiving. <laughs> yes. Months. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Know? Wow. So people will, you know, I've got a couple of good ones, but they took at least four months. It was kind of reminding me of pushing a boulder up a hill. Just wow. tiny, tiny corrections. 
And, um, you know, eventually in the end, I would, I would get something that felt was pretty good, but it was really hard. But, but yeah, yeah, I would say the Nocturnes are, are second to that. Yeah. 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 I, um, I've always heard that you start with the eyes on a portrait. Is that, is that so? Um, I, I, I don't, I start with the overall composition and, you know, a strong drawing and like the body language. I see the, yeah. the pose, but yeah. And yeah, I know another artist I, uh, since she starts with the eyes and then works out from there. Yeah. So I guess it's whatever works for you. Yeah. I guess there's so many subtle, uh, expressions a person can have over, you know, that, that you have to try to capture. I can get that, you know, animal, uh, like painting a deer or something standing sideways is a little different, <laughs> you know, you don't have to worry about the personality of it so much. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, uh, and what type of, uh, uh, clients would you say, are they from all over that you have? Yeah. Yeah, pretty much all over the country. My main gallery is um, Dowling Walsh in Rockland, but they have clients from all over. You know, yeah. even a, a couple um, paintings went to Germany, I think, maybe one in Australia. Um, yeah, pretty much all over, but yeah, most of the U.S. and the Eastern U.S. Uh huh. Um, I'm going to uh, put up a picture, and we'll have this up uh, on the podcast uh, as the podcast image. But this is something you know. You, you uh oh yeah this let's talk about this painting it's really amazing and uh i i think you have the best shadow shadowing i've ever seen in a painting it's just amazing thanks yeah that's um it's called self portrait with ski patrol and in the winter i go skiing up at the camden snowball which is about a half an hour away and i would often take a little camera with me just to take snapshots and this was one moment i was just going up the ski lift and took this snapshot as a ski patrol guy scooted underneath me and as i when i got home and looked at it i thought that's a really neat scene i think i'll try it but i really didn't have much confidence because there wasn't much in it it's like there's no horizon or sky and you're looking down at the snow and i, I just didn't think it could work but as i worked on it progressed it you know it started turning out pretty good and i realized a lot of that was about the air and the light and the shadow and the sort of substance versus no substance like the only solid objects are maybe the trees and, and the skier and the rest is all shadow and it was a great uh, wow. lesson and and you know what a good painting can be or what can work before yeah. that i was just focusing on you know interesting solid objects the way you would arrange them but this this has a lot of air in it and um, and again it's built up from like a medium gray value of snow and then highlights um you know where everyone is has skied over it and it's also what i love is the uh, serendipitous moments that i paint from just going yeah. about your business if you have a camera with you you can you can grab that moment of something you never would have thought of you know and it can turn out to, to be a really good painting yeah there's a saying i it goes something like um the camera makes a prisoner of the present moment i heard that <laughs> like years ago and it kind of uh that does it's like a captured moment right there and yeah. that ski patrol guy doesn't even know he's famous <laughs> no that's right I know. yeah no that's uh that's a, a absolute lo lovely painting i really uh this is just quite it just shows that your uh your talent on on doing this and uh, i love the way the it looks like it was a very well skied area and then the patrol skier uh, is one that makes the most recent marks following right. up to the back of his skis. So yeah, that's really great. Um, and that's, uh, yeah, Camden, Snow Bowl. We didn't have any snow last year there at all. That was really, that was a no, bad year for them up I there. I just went once, yeah. I did, I, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so what are the, some, I, I, I had this painting I saw that you did too. It almost looks like a, a, a britcher. I'm not sure if you know who that artist is. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Very, yeah, kind of a Hudson River, or um, or Trust R Richards. Um, yeah, yeah, very similar. Absolutely beautiful. Is this a local scene? 
Uh, yeah, that's uh, Monhegan. That's uh, Blackhead on Monhegan, which is a really famous motif, which almost everyone has painted. Oh, okay. So let's talk about Monhegan. You just got back from there. Yeah. Yeah, my girlfriend and I were out there for a week, and we usually rent a cottage out there for a week each year. And um, and I go around and take photos and make sketches and usually come back with two or three ideas. Ah, yeah. Yeah, but, that's you know, great been a very famous place for artists for, you know, 140 years or so. That's right. And uh, you actually te teach out there or you have taught out there in the past, right? Um, no, I haven't taught. I, I did a residency out there. There's oh, the, I'm sorry. That's what it is. Yeah. Yeah. The um, it used to be called the Karina House Residency. I think it's just the Monhegan Artist Island, Island Residency. That was in 93 and I was out there for six weeks. Wow. And that's great. You know, they just give you a stipend and six weeks to paint or do anything that, that you want. Sounds pretty nice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it's yeah. still going. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good, good program. So, uh, so when you, um, you know, every artist has like, uh, as far as I know, every artist I've ever known has like a back room of things that they never sold or they did early or, the, or they like. Do you have that type of situation or do your things all move along? No, yeah, I have a bunch here in the studio that haven't haven't sold. Some that have been at the gallery for many years, and they're they're just kind of oddball or I don't know, too big or something or too expensive <laughs> and haven't sold. Yeah, and a couple of older ones. Yeah, one of the first ones I did them on Hegan. Um, yeah. Maybe the second painting I attempted when I was in in, in my um, painting class in in college is is one of my sister standing in front of a house. And that was an oil. And I remember painting that and not knowing how thick the, to put the paint on. Ah. You're starting out. It's like, what is this? It's like coming out as thick as peanut butter. And I just you know, didn't know how thick I wanted to. It's like, what am I supposed to do with this stuff? You know. <laughs> but I and gradually ended up with this kind of smooth, almost enamel-like surface that that I prefer. Yeah. And is that is that all? Are all your paintings? Well, you mentioned layers. Are are your paintings layers like glazes as yeah. well? Yep, glazes, a lot of semi-transparent. If I do the moon, that'll be all glazed. Like, I'll leave the moon area pure white when I lay out the composition and then just glaze over that to make it pop out. Wow. Maybe not so much that one, but other moon evening, nighttime moon scenes, you know. Yeah. Um, that'll just be a glaze, which I, which I got the idea from reading a Maxfield Parish book. <laughs> oh, really? Wow. He explained his process of glazing. And um, I've heard a couple of paintings like that where it's all glazes, it's all transparent, kind of like like slide film was, you know. Um, but that's really hard. <laughs> it's, it's like a layer of pure color and then varnish, another layer of pure color. Uh, very difficult. Wow. And so you're talking about varnishes in between? Yeah, yeah. Although the only thing I use for varnish now is liquid. Windsor Newton, it's the alkyd resin. That's the only medium that I use. But yeah, I, I like that a lot. Yeah. And that actually dries a little quicker too, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. It helps yeah. the process move along at, like at the end of the day. Here's another moon I just put up here. Yeah. That's a good example where this, the moon itself is all glazed and thin layers of yellow. And the rest of the painting is all like opaque, you know, dark, heavy, heavy. Yeah. color so that allows the moon to pop out i well, think if you use I, opaque yellows and whites in the moon it's not going to be quite as bright now maybe I, i'm talking a little more technical than the average listener would care to hear okay. but uh, i do want to ask this when you do something like this how is it are the is the tree line last or is this all done together um yeah, the tree line over the moon i should say yeah, that was all pretty much done together. Ah. I think the tree line was lower when I started, and as I got finished, I gradually kind of crept up the trees to make those shapes a little more interesting. Ah, wow. With heavy opaque, you know, because um, that's kind of an important part where the that sun, uh, the bright light from the moon is kind of bursting through those branches and tried to make that interesting. Yeah, and I see that you, you've had the moon in a, a number of your paintings. Yeah. And one of them, I think I saw, 
this is a, uh, I think I saw one, you had one, you sold it right away this summer. Am I, am I right about that? Um, this one here? No, this another one you had to the moon. I was trying to put it up on the screen. There's a reflection in the water below it. Oh yeah. Yep. Yeah. That was a Isla Ho. Yes. Yeah. 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 Woman bought that this summer. I think the day that I put it up. That, that, that yeah. Outdoor that's arch. what I remember. <laughs> yeah. That was nice. <laughs> yeah. It's nice when that happens. Oh yeah. Uh, so have you ever, uh, have you ever try like tried to experiment outside of your comfort zone when it comes to your style or do you just stick with what you're doing? Sorry, my uh, screen's flashing here. Yeah. I uh, kind of stick. Oh, yeah, I've pretty much stuck with that style. I think it's like a long-term evolution of of gradually learning and improving and perfecting that that style. I, I'm I'm happy with that, and um, haven't really felt the need to. Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, uh, it works. <laughs> it works very well. And um, what are some of the projects you're working on now? Well, right behind me is from uh, last week's Monhegan trip. I don't know if you can see. Oh, okay. Yep. Just there was a just a snapshot. There's a guy fixing his house. There was some work being done on these gables in the house in the center of town. And from that snapshot, I kind of recomposed it. And I don't know if you can see here. I'm that panel which is coated with um, burnt sienna. That's always the base that I use. Yeah. And I've just been working on the architectural drawing part of that right now um and so that's um that's a scene that's that, that i've just started yeah. let me let get this other one behind me there's one of a, a hinge on monahegan <laughs> yeah since you got the camera right there in front of you yeah all right here's oh, one wow maybe half done um wow. i like working with whites and you know, light and shadow, and that's sort of a trompe l'oeil. Yeah, I'll say it is. Yeah. yeah, and so that's, I don't know, halfway along. So, that you know, that's what's happening. And that was, again, from a snapshot, just walking around, something grabs your attention. You're like, oh, maybe that can work. Wow. Yeah. I yeah. like the, the challenge of that. It's, it's always, I always think it's like trying to make a silk purse out of a sow's ear. <laughs> <laughs> Scenes, you know, there's, what did Andrew Wyatt say? There's, You'll start with a half an inch of an idea, you know, and you and the paint uh, will work up from there. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, that's that's really good. Uh, I love that type of work. Uh, I, I'm I'm jealous of that. How long does it take you to let's say let's just pull this this painting up to make this painting look as beautiful as it is? It's just gorgeous. Uh, how much time do you have in a, a piece like this? That would be about three weeks, I think. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, two to three weeks. A lot of time was spent drawing out the um, the rock, the geology, trying to get it somewhat accurate. Um, you know, looking at it now, I probably could have spent more time, but um, <laughs> I think yeah. yeah, like yeah, you were talking about the artists you knew who just who can't paint loosely, and I, I can't seem to either. I like all those details everything in there is important and i think that all adds to you know whatever it is that inspired you is, is, is all that little stuff in there of course the hard thing is to make it all work together so that it doesn't all crumble right um i'm going to ask you kind of a funny question do you know when you're done yeah 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 there's a point where you just can't really improve it anymore yeah where you're tweaking this little part and that little part and then you'll take a photo and it didn't, it didn't improve it any over the previous photo. And I think and that's, that's an important part of the process is photographing the painting. When you think you're done and it'll take a snapshot and it looks terrible because the camera uh -huh. just doesn't lie. It's like, Oh geez. Yeah. So I've actually seen that before. And the stuff that I do, I'm not saying, you know, I, I call myself a painter and I'll call myself an artist, but I I'll take a picture of something and say, Oh geez, I didn't even notice that. Or, but yeah. you can see it in a photo somehow. <laughs> exactly. It's terrible. I know it's like, I delude myself a lot of the time. I think cause maybe after three weeks you, you want to be done and you think it's brilliant, but yeah, <laughs> it doesn't let you off easy. 
<laughs> um, I heard an abstract artist say, um, let's see, don't worry about how you're going to start. Just worry about how you're going to end. <laughs> yeah. yeah I works. can see that in abstract work for sure. Yeah. Yeah. It's um, also a good test at like putting the painting at a distance. I'll lean it up against my garage, like a hundred feet away and, you know, turn it upside down, look at it in a mirror, you know, those tricks. Yeah. I remember my dad when he, 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 he went uh he trained under an artist uh, years ago in the 60s and um you know they started by doing all the drawings upside down like an upside down bottle mm. up, you know just so you can train your eye to see the object and not try to make it an object you know what i mean see the lines oh yeah yeah, yeah just just as a as a flat composition or design yeah that that's a good idea right Right. Do you have a, do you ever do any types of uh, like a series? Do you run in a series or do you just, is it like a one sort of random idea after another? Yeah, it's mostly one random idea after another. I've tried to do a series and I, I, after the second or third painting, I get tired of it. It becomes kind of onerous. <laughs> uh -huh. You're stuck with that idea. But yeah. The only consistent thing would be the moon paintings, which, I find that subject really, really compelling. Even, I mean, it's very common and kind of a cliche, but I still think it's a, you know, very compelling subject yeah. with a lot of depth to it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love those paintings and uh, I hope you do. I hope you do more. Well, uh, thank you so much. It's been a, it's been a real pleasure. Oh, sure. Same and, here. And so uh, let's uh, remind the audience, they can go to dvickery.com and that's where your paintings are. Right. Yep. Yep. And, and also with um, the Dowling Walsh Gallery website, we'll have my work there too. And, and where is that? In in Rockland. Uh, yep, Main Street, Rockland. I think it's just mm -hmm. DowlingWalsh.com. I've also started showing at uh, Bernay Fine Art in Great Barrington, Massachusetts. Ah. About seven pieces of mine there. Uh huh. Excellent. Well, thank you very much, David. Sure. Thank you, Martin. All right. Take care. All right, bye-bye.